Winning cures everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's going on? It is Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. You can follow us, of course, on everything <laughs> over at winningcureseverything.com. Uh, our YouTube, hit subscribe on that. Leave some comments. Uh, our Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Spotify, whatever your favorite podcast app is, hit subscribe, leave a nice review a nice five-star review. We would appreciate it. The support matters uh, more than you think it does. So if you would, so kindly, go leave us some reviews on the podcast. Tell your buddies about the show. All those wonderful things. The show brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. If you're watching on YouTube, you see it on the screen. It is fantastic. Go to tunicatravel.com. they got six incredible sports books. You can find more information about them over there. TunicaTravel.com. That is the website. Go visit it now. <laughs> Chris, we got some news to discuss. Uh, not not much to uh, to break into. Not a lot of recaps. Not a lot of. Uh, at, there's no real NFL, you know, week one preview, anything like that until next week. That's right. But we did have some big breaking news in the NFL over the weekend. So of course we have to discuss that. Two NFL stories. One college football story. Uh, look, first off, we'll talk about Andrew Luck retiring. Then we'll bust into Lamar Miller and his torn ACL, what that means for the Texans. And we're going to talk about Mississippi State and their NCAA sanctions. Uh, let's first jump into the Andrew Luck talk. It's the biggest story in the, in the country right now going yes. on in sports, and, uh, and it deserves the conversation. What was your immediate reaction to it? Like I, so, so I would imagine that when you saw it, you did kind of like myself and like some of these other guys that are out there that that saw it and thought, okay, Shefty got hacked, or no, this isn't no, no, actually. No, I didn't think that at all. I, I when I when I saw it, my immediate reaction was um, something 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 has happened. Okay. Yeah. I personally know people and and we're kind of in being in the Memphis area with St. Jude down the road, man, I can't tell you the number of people that I have met through life that went to the doctor for a broken arm or, um, you know, just, just some kind of weird bug that they can't seem to shake or whatever and come to find out they find cancer. Yeah. And, and my kind of first thought is the only reason he's retiring is because this ankle injury they've, in, in all of the testing that they've done to kind of pinpoint the injury, maybe they found something. Why, why are you walking away at 29 unless this is serious, yeah. uh, you know, and, uh, and, and we'll get to, you know, there's a, there's another guy in the NFL we we're talking about earlier, found a blood clot in his, in, in him with the Patriots. Yeah. David and, Andrews. Yep. And, and, and it's just one of those things where you just kind of, I'm sure he was getting medical treatment for something, had some sort of symptom, and in the testing, you just boo find this thing. That was my first reaction and my first thought. And 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 we're gonna eventually go all full circle around all of this, but you see the fans have how, how they found out about it during the game and they start booing him. And I think, man, they don't really know why. Like, I guess I would feel better about you booing him. Knowing that is just he can't he's just not he's tired of the the injuries. That's he's tired I was, of not I being know about that. Whatever. Like, I, how do you I, sleep at night if you find out the dude found out he's got cancer and I just boot him off the field? Like, yeah, because that that was where my brain went, you know. And, and, I, and maybe I don't I'm minority there. The Indianapolis fans for booing because it's it. It's so emotional because the fans that were there are the diehards because that was late. Well, yeah, if you're at a preseason game, yeah. yeah you well, if you're at a preseason game late, right, and when a, your team is already well, it's going into halftime, you're not like super late. That's Oh, I thought this was – were they not booing at the end of the game? Nope. That I, was walking into halftime. It's e Either way, it, it, you're still at halftime of a game at a preseason yeah. game. You know, these are people that, that spend their hard-earned money to go and see the Colts. But I can't I can't get mad at Andrew Luck about this, you know? No, it, no, not at all. It, not at this all. is, I will tell you this. He is, uh, so he's 29. He's giving up $58.1 in future money, like guaranteed future money. 
Um, it, this is are the Colts to blame for this? And the reason I ask that question, do you remember how bad their offensive line was early oh, on? Oh, yeah. No, no, there's no question. The organization absolutely is to blame. Like, this is why you have to make sure that you have a solid offensive line before you go trying to find your franchise quarterback because you cannot tell if That's you have right. a franchise quarterback until you get the guy protection. Before you get that guy, you need to beef that line or do yeah. something to protect it. Um, I find it I find it pretty incredible. So I'm I'm always I'm always impressed with the relationships that that players and teammates build with one another. I remember in high school when I played football, like my closest friends were guys on the team. And it just you you just go through some pretty awful stuff, some pretty fun stuff, but you do it together no matter how hard, how good, how bad, whatever. Um, you do it together and it builds a friendship. Uh, T.Y. Hilton uh, sent out a tweet today. He says, every time I think about it, tears start to flow. Um, no one understands you like I do. Um, our bond is is one of a kind, and I'm dedicating my season to my best friend. Love you, number 12. And, and I thought – and, and I joke about this. We're in a group text with a bunch of guys, and whenever the Julian Edelman, Tom Brady, like like love fest always seems to happen on Twitter between those guys, I always joke and say, "Man, if I could ever find somebody that loves me the way Jules loves Tom, like I, that's all I want in this world. That's I don't need money, I don't need fame, I don't yeah. need fortune, I don't need anything. I just need somebody that'll ride or die with me the way those guys are." I see Ty doing this and saying, "That's it. That's that's what this game is about." Yeah, it's why we played sports. Now I love watching it because I'm completely unable to participate in anything athletic now. But <laughs> like, like the connections matter. These relationships matter. I'm not just watching a dude throw a football to an athlete, you know. It, and I think that's the reason I take umbrage, and I I take it so personal when I see these quarterbacks that just seem to be assholes and complete divas, and they're just so off to themselves. And their teammates leave, and none of them have anything good to say about them. Like, come oh, man, what does that mean? Like, you're you're missing out on these relationships that are gonna last the rest of your life. Yeah, I don't know. Did you watch on Sunday Night Football the the Ben Lo- uh, Roethlisberger interview? So no. they had the Steelers and the Titans on. I and knew they did that game, and I missed it completely. And so. They had him, and he was discuss- They asked him about Antonio Brown and and all that, and he said the rift began when he was in practice, and he thought that his role was that he needed to try and call people out and get people to you know take a, accountability along with himself. Like he said, you know, it wasn't everybody else. Like I blame myself as well after the Denver game. And that's when the rift began between him and, and A.B. And he said, you know, I lost one of my best friends because yeah. of the way that I acted in practice after that. And he said, and nothing that I did after that could fix it. You know, yeah. and it's well, like I know A.B. A.B. gets a lot of blame. We see who he is as a person. But I'm, I'm hard on Ben. I'm hard on Ben because I think he's just as big of a diva. He, he goes out. Well, it it and, sounded like he has figured that out because those guys, like Washington and Juju Smith-Schuster, like those guys are ride or die for Ben Roethlisberger. Right. They are today yeah. because that's their quarterback and they're young and they got nobody else. They haven't earned any right to, to be anything other than that. Yeah. But And maybe he has learned. But I know he used to go on the media and talk about how guys need to stop clearing stuff on the media. And then literally the next conversation would call guys out in the media. In like, the media. It's okay for you to do it, but it's not okay for them to do it? Yeah. Come on, man. I mean, it, it's crazy. Luck, luck is obviously a different kind of guy, and and I wish him the best. Um, so there's all kinds of reports out there. Now, this is the kind of stuff that makes me sick. All right, This is the kind of stuff that bothers me. All these Colt fans are like fighting now to get their money back on their season tickets. Oh, I'm I'm so sorry that you've had 20 years of Peyton Manning and Andrew Luck that you've never struggled for a quarterback in all this time. And now, you know, the the brown side of me says, you know what? Kiss, kiss my ass. This is some bull crap. You want your money back because you thought you were buying season tickets to see Andrew Luck. Yeah. So yeah, did you got, see the Jaguars long snapper? Is yeah, that what you got, getting into? We got report. Yeah, Matt Matt, Matt Overton, Overton 
plays for the Jags, used to play for the Colts, said, I'm willing to buy any season tickets that somebody wants. He's going to donate them to a children's hospital. And you know what? I get behind that. You yep. start a GoFundMe page or, or something where you can throw some money at, look, I'll, I'll, I'll pony up what little I got to, to give to something of that nature because – these types of fans disgust me. We don't live in a town. We're not fortunate enough to have an NFL team where we live. We got to get on a car. We got to get on a plane Got to find a train. We got to go a long distance to, to be able to, to see these guys play. And, uh, and, and, and folks that have them in the backyards and you get season tickets and you've had nothing but great quarterbacks. Good luck. Now I love Jacoby Brissett. I hope to God Jacoby Brissett gets the free agent market does well and bounces out of there. I want to see them go, not not for any reason other than just your fans are spoiled, go through a decade of just nine quarterbacks in 10 years. Let's <laughs> let's see how that feels on that, okay? Just piss me off. Of, of course the Browns would wish that on on somebody else. That's right. Well, like, somebody else needs to go through this. I don't, my quarterback is gone, and so now he, he left us high and dry, and so therefore, you know, Hey, I, I want to address something else about this, okay? Okay. Because I thought long and hard, and I've gone back and forth a little bit. I, Andrew Luck, in his press conference, it broke. It really broke my heart that he wasn't prepared to do that that night. Wanted to tell his teammates, wanted to wanted to have a moment, had a press conference scheduled to actually tell people the next day, had a plan for all this. I know it's Schefter's job. I know it's these guys' job when they get information. What benefit is it to leak it out and report it the night before? Well, you you Take do that so moment away it, from him for Shefty. I don't I don't put this blame on on Adam Schefter. Like I don't put this on him at all. Uh, okay. Somebody in that organization gave him this information. That's I, I agree, and, and that person needs to be dealt with, and I understand that. But my question is this: as a reporter. There are some stories it's totally fine to go out there, but you know this dude's about to hang it up. You know that he's about to have a hard conversation with his teammates. You just got this information. Is it not okay to just say, "Hey, as long as the as the the uh, the feed goes through ESPN and not NFL Network or CBS or NBC, and and, and my guys get the story, I'm just going to report out news tomorrow." coming out of Indianapolis press conference will be at so-and-so time. And, and I just want to know, is that not acceptable to just, just let me get that out there. And, and you got to be the one to report that because I want to know how does it affect their revenue? How did that affect, how did that make ESPN or Adam Schefter one nickel more? I don't, I don't think it necessarily did, but so it just took away a moment from a guy that I think has earned that moment. I, I agree with you. I mean, he um, was literally up there kind of upset. A, he wouldn't have had the fans booing on him because they wouldn't have found out that way, and he could have said his goodbye the way they wanted to, and then people could have digested well, but here, it. Here's yeah. the deal. So, and he, then, he told it to somebody. If he, he told wanted, it to the owner. He told it to the GM. He told it to his head coach. They've known for weeks, for months, and they kept it pretty tight for a long time. At some point in time, somebody leaked it. Well, but, if, if they knew for that long, then – Andrew Luck should have had the conversation with his teammates already. No, like I, no, I'm 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 okay with telling your your bosses and not telling the team until you're ready to make the decision to tell the team. And that's you can bolt see, something over all you want, but and I have a hard time believing that he told the owner just because before Trump came into our life, if you said the word "mad tweeter," it was Jim Irsay. It was that dude spent half his time and money <laughs> on meth and hookers. I can't believe that they told that guy and he kept a secret for two weeks. I just don't believe that. Yeah, I don't. I don't buy that but, either. But I, the GM and the and the coach, he said knew whatever. But the guy was up there, and I mean, he was like ashamed. He's like, I'm standing up here in gym shorts and a t-shirt, and I just wish I looked better. And and I like he holds himself to a high standard. And yeah. you're taking that moment away. I just don't understand the benefit. And we have this conversation all the time. Everybody wants to be first. Nobody cares about being right. And in this situation, it's not about having the story right, but but it's about being right as a person and just saying, you know what? I'm going to sit on this. I'm going to sit on this, and I'm going to let the person who owns this story tell his own story. I, I'm not. I'm I, not I gonna, think it is something that that Schefter would need to discuss you know, with ESPN management, et cetera, because it is literally his job to break stories 
as soon as they come in because I, that's I, I, I get that it's his job. But I can't get mad at Adam he, Schefter for this. Not, you like know? I said, it's his job. But at some point in time, there's a lot of things that are my job that I have the decision to say, you know what, we do things a certain way because it's my job. Today, I'm not going to do that. That's Today, a- I'm going to sit on it. And I can still report something, and I just not give you the, the bombshell. And I let him tell you himself. Yeah, I can understand you know, that. Because because nobody would have known what to expect. They would have just known, hey, the Colts got a, got a press conference at, at, at 11 a.m. or 9 a.m. or whenever it's going to be. It well, and then on ESPN, it, it, like, honestly, if nobody else had that story, like, all of the talk for the from Saturday night through whenever the press conference was on was ESPN the radio, day. on all the shows. The there was yeah. no radio. There was no – nobody's working on Saturday night. You know me. You, you know sports radio. All those are pre-recorded shows or whatever that late. No, like Sunday, a Sunday morning? Like well, a, Sunday morning would Sunday have been – And then they, have, they do have a Saturday night show – that that they do, and it's like like there is ESPN has live shows at every hour of every day, and I know it sounds I, I, ridiculous, but it's also Fox Sports. Everything like I know they do the the conversation would be what are the Colts announcing? So it would have been that's it, it would have fueled then even let more that talk. Be the conversation. That's yeah. okay. That's no, that's, that's right. but that's what I'm saying is like, but he at least gets to go out and he gives the answer himself from his words the way he wants to instead of being caught off guard and his his teammates finding out at halftime on Twitter when they're in the locker room, whatever. It's just, I I just don't I don't like him getting booed off the stage like that wouldn't have happened. He wouldn't have got booed off the field. Yeah. No, I, I like agree. Like I said, with you. obviously somebody leaked it to Adam. That person is the majority to blame. But Adam's the like I think about that when Woj drops all these bombs. Ninety percent of these things don't affect anybody's life. Okay. Yeah. They're they're yeah. just things that happen, and we're gonna find out anyway. And Woj wants to be the one to break it, or Shefty wants to be the one to break it. That's great. This is this is the last big thing this guy is gonna have in his life, and we couldn't let him do it on his own terms. That that's that's all. All right, now you said I, I, I think you, that's disappointing. You just said there it, the next question before we move on to the next two topics, which we won't spend as long on. Um, yeah, no, you said this will be the last big thing he does in his life. Yes, he's only twenty nine years old. Correct. Do you think that he comes back? No. Nope. I kind of agree with you. He nope. he's a different cat. He's a different I mean, remember, dude. Dude's like crazy and architect. He wants to travel the world. Everyone's saying, and it's not and his just to see cool things. Yeah, like, like he, yeah, he wants to have a family. I, I, I could that guy can make a fortune just like if Andrew Luck was designing your house or whatever it is that that he wants to do architecturally. Anybody in the world would come to him. So well, on the on the other side of this. He's he's already made what close to a hundred million dollars. Yeah, he's he's made over a hundred million dollars, and that's that's football money. That yeah. is no, we don't know how much endorsement money he's made. No, I'm sure it's a, I'm sure it's a fortune. So, so he's fine financially, um, but it's just thinking of what are you going to do for the next forty years of your life because you're thirty years old. So you're not going to sit at home just being retired. I will tell you, I do think it'd be cool if he got into TV. He's got a he's got a super unique voice that I actually find calming and like. Yeah. And and I think he's got the mind and he sees the field better than maybe anybody else in TV right now. I know Romo is incredible at it. Oh, he could I, make I, a fortune I, doing that. I think he would, but not just make a fortune. I think he would be really good. Oh yeah, and I uh, I think he'd be really good. At, like you have to be good to be able to make a fortune. Yeah, and, um, it, and then it and then it keeps him in the game. It keeps yeah. him around the game. That's the best. And thing I could see do. him coming back and doing that in a couple of years or something. But like I don't that. see him strapping it back up, man. I don't. I, he's that's I brought that up because he is. I mean, remember he is just a different kind of cat. Like yes. he he had the option of coming out and being the oh, number yeah. one. I mean, he would have been the number one overall pick. Yep. A year before he was the number one pick, he would have been drafted before Cam Newton. Like, period. Oh, no, no doubt. No and, doubt. He was that good. And instead, he went back for another year to finish getting his degree. He wanted to play college football. Like, the money was never a big thing. And, you know, it's so Clay Travis does outkick the coverage. And on his show, he discussed, you know, how many of you, after you made $100 million, if you really weren't a huge fan of your job, how, how many of you would keep going to work after you've made that much money? No. Like, 
I don't know that many. Like, yeah. I don't know of anybody, really. That's right. So, it, if football just – he keeps getting hurt. He he keeps having to deal with this kind of crap. You know, if he really just doesn't have that fire for the game anymore, I can't blame him at all. At all. Like, I think this is the right decision for him, and it sucks for Indianapolis fans, and it sucks for – you know, it, the NFL as a whole, because we don't get to watch this guy play. Um, now, we'll tell you, like, the let's talk about betting markets, because we already did a preview. We already went through all that. Uh, the over-under was 9.5, and, and now their win total is down to 6.5, which I think might be a little low, because I think the defense is pretty good, and that offensive line is still really good. This is not 2017. Kobe's a professional quarterback. Exactly. Like this, I mean, he's, he's, he's actually he's got an stud, offensive line. That dude has learned under Tom. He's learned under Andrew, and and he's he is. I mean, literally, I was talking to to different people about this before the season started, and and it was about how, um, like, they probably have the best backup, like quarterback situation you could have in the NFL. I was trying to think of what was the best quarterback situation if the starter goes down you know, how little do things change? And, and I was like, man, I, I don't know that it's the saints. You know, I don't know that Teddy Bridgewater mm-hmm. is, is that. Well, and, I don't and I even trying, know that Teddy Bridgewater would be the starter. Yeah. Like, I think, I think, I, think Taysom, Taysom, I mean, I'm, he nah, probably Taysom would. Was, is a change of pace and he does some trick things, but he's not the best guy. And, and I, I, I really, I mean, I came down to the fact that I think, I think the Colts have it. I think they have the best situation in, in the league. I'm surprised you um, didn't say the Jags. Your boy Gardner Minshew's there now. <laughs> no, nah, he's young. He's a rookie. He's I'm trying, playing, to, he's trying I'm playing, to make I'm a playing. spot, man. I'm playing. <laughs> and Nick Foles ain't that great to begin with. Yeah, no, I, well, um, there's not that much of a drop off, right? No. <laughs> well, but still got to be good. So, anyway, I, it's I, funny I, we I'm, say that about a Super Bowl winning quarterback, right? Like Super Bowl MVP win. Come on now. <laughs> I'm not ready to talk about that. I wasn't even trying to bring up the fact that he beat up on the Patriots. I was just thinking, like, he's a Super Bowl MVP, and we're like, I mean, he ain't that great. Like, come you on know. now. <laughs> we'll talk, let's talk about a team that doesn't have doesn't have a general manager. Yeah, that just lost a player, and they probably need to need a general manager to make some deals. Yeah, Lamar and, Miller goes down. Yeah, that's yeah. That doesn't have a general manager, and they need somebody. That's this the was the this was the place I thought was the best fit for Melvin Gordon from. Second one when Melvin said, I want to be traded. They got cap, they got money, and this offense is ready to explode. Lamar Miller, been in the league for a long time. He is steady, Eddie, but he's got to be the most boring running back in the league. That's an every down starter. Yes. Yes. They made the Duke Donson trade, and I was like, close, close, but not it. Is this enough to put them over the hump to say, let's go grab Melvin? Well, here's the question that I had for you. Could it because it, all the talk has been of the Texans trading Clowney, right? Yeah, I mean, how ridiculous! Well, the Chargers wouldn't do that deal. I, I don't think they need him. They've got they've got the they might have the best Ed one two punch edge rusher. It's either them or Denver with 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 Ingram and uh, and Bosa. I, I don't know where Clowney would come in there. And that's what I'm those trying guys, to. Both of those guys are locked up and and paid and and good. You're you're not worried about, you know, Clowney. I don't know where he would be. You can't you can't have three edge rushers at yeah, one time. Yeah, I mean, and you can't you can't put Clowney in at defensive tackle. He doesn't fit no. there. No, I mean, he wouldn't you, fit there. You could put one of those guys in as inside you know, linebacker, but maybe. that would be crazy. That'd be crazy. I don't. It just doesn't work. It doesn't, or put one at defensive end and one at outside linebacker, and what I mean. Right. The, there wouldn't, but I just don't think it works. I don't think it works either, because no. that's they all specialize in the exact same thing, and I don't think that that would be. But e- either way, could they find? Uh, they they need to find somebody, because Duke Johnson is he was supposed to come in as a change of pace guy for Lamar Miller, right? I or, think Duke Johnson's better than that. Okay, hang on, let me let's stop that there. I think Duke Johnson's better than that. Duke Johnson could be a three down back, but can he play an entire season? No, he, he can't be a bell cow. That's what you I'm need, saying. <laughs> you need a second dude, but but he's far more than just I'm coming in on third downs. No, I I agree. He uh, was Duke, Duke is a freak talent. Out of he Miami. was brought in 
to also help with the uh, the, the passing game, like the running back That's passing right. game, um, and to to do some different things because Lamar couldn't do that, right? Like That's it was right. just he was he's your every down back. That's right. But Duke Johnson does all sorts of different stuff. But he can he stay healthy for a full season? Being what you what you were talking about, yeah, a bell cow, and I don't think I don't I don't think, think it's can. Just built that way, yeah. Um, so you you can need do a couple of games, sure, but you, you need somebody you, else. Like you, you gotta you, have somebody else. And and I where I mean, it, a lot of people pick up running backs just off the trash heap, right? So Correct. they'll be able to find somebody, but at where that is or who that is, I have no idea right now because pretty much offense, it's ready to explode. That, but but if you don't have to worry about the run, it's going to be real hard on a guy like Deshaun. Yeah, he's still young. He's still learning this league, and that offensive line is trash. Oh yeah, I mean it's it it's real real bad. Yeah. So between those two things happening, uh, the Titans and the Jags look like they're in pretty good position now. I mean this kind of changes everything for Marcus Mariota, doesn't it? Yeah, well, Marcus Mariota's biggest issue is is what it's always been. He don't need to worry about the other team. He got to stay his own. He got to keep on the field. He's agreed, stay on agreed. The field. If but if he stays on the field, like it would have been much more difficult to oh, yeah. win a division. If he goes in in a contract year and wins the division and stays healthy, you know, it say say he gets knocked out for a game, you know, whatever. Yeah. He plays fifteen out of sixteen, but they win the division, like. I mean, he's getting paid. Oh, I think that's a, I think that's a bad deal for Titans. God, I, I think that's a bad deal for the Titans. I, you may think long so, term, but long term. But Come man, on, man, like it, it, nobody remembers in December what happened in September to get you to this point, right? So in December, if they're playing for a division title, and they're playing, you know, the Colts with Jacoby Brissett, and they end up, you know, whatever. And, you know, these things happen. These things happen. All right, you want to you want to shift off NFL? Let's talk about uh, college football. Just a, tell, a touch. Tell, tell me about the Mississippi State deal. All right, so Mississippi State, uh, in in Missouri fans' ears, perked up. Of course, when they heard this, they had a tutor scandal, and what happened is there were ten athletes. All right, was it more than that? Was it ten football players or just? Like eight football players no, and two basketball. No, players. it was it was ten. I think it was ten football players and multiple basketball players. Yeah, so it's a, a lot of people. That's right. So Missouri kind of had the same thing, right? Where they had a, a tutor that went rogue, and she went and told her entire story to the NCAA. Da 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 da. Well, Mississippi State found out about all this stuff, kind of kept it in house, went to the NCAA with it, got a plea deal, basically. And now they don't have to deal with a bowl ban. They had two scholarships uh, over the next two years uh, taken away from them. Um, they've got guys that are suspended for however long it may be. Is is there a total on this? No, and I haven't seen. The, I'm sure it's going to be against the high school teams they play in the first couple of weeks. Yeah, probably, but either way, they Nobody's do play Louisiana Lafayette. SEC game. Yeah, they play Louisiana Lafayette in the first week, and well. Excuse me, Louisiana in the first week, the Raging Cajuns, um, and that could be that could be difficult because they play them down in New Orleans, and I mean we'll see, but more than likely they've got plenty of talent to be able to win that game anyway. That's right. Um, the reason Missouri fans are fired up is because Missouri, you know, the NCAA told them that they had exemplary cooperation, like they came and they told the NCAA everything, and they uh, they cooperated with all of it. And they, they got still got a bull band. Yeah. You know, and, and still had to deal with, you know, scholarship reductions and whatever else. Well, Mississippi State has an even worse tutor situation. And because they wrapped it up and handled it in house and took it to the NCAA as opposed to the tutor giving it to the NCAA, then Mississippi State doesn't get a bull band, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So it, it was out of Missouri's control. That's right. And they still got hammered, even though they cooperated with everything. And Mississippi State found out about it before the NCAA did. And it, it yes, the the stories are slightly different, right? But I I still I am of the belief that Missouri will have that bowl ban 
taken off. They will get to go to a bowl game this year. I don't um, think so. And here's the reason why. Because every time I think that what is the right thing to do? What is the thing that should happen? Missouri NCAA should not have the bowl game. Absolute, absolute, absolute opposite. They, they pick and choose who they want to take down. Every time, there's no consistency in yeah, how they make the rulings they or when want, they make rulings. They, they want are, to take down without Mississippi question, State. the worst organization <laughs> ever formed by human beings. Yeah, you're you're probably right about that. You're probably right. They uh, they are the most useless group of people active in the world today they, that have power and influence. Yeah, a lot of it, by the way. It, it's it's ridiculous. Like if if I'm I'll tell you this, if I'm Hawaii, like I'm paying players left and right because you know they ain't going out to Hawaii to investigate to do, anything. No. At they ain't, all. It's they ain't worried bastard. about that. No. So if if I'm Hawaii, I'm doing that. But if I'm Mississippi State or one of these that's, you know, relatively close to Indianapolis, nope. I ain't doing nothing unless I already know that I'm good with them. Right. You're in a big conference with a big boy that's protected by this thug group, then then yeah, you got to keep in line really, really tight. And that's what I'm trying to figure. Like, why why would they go after Missouri but not Mississippi State? Right? Mississippi yeah, State picking, has been hammered. They, they just they just have to show a level of inconsistency with everybody so they don't look like they're showing favoritism when they when they actually slap somebody big that they should come down hard on on the wrist. Now, do you find it weird that Mississippi State will not release the names of the players that are suspended because of uh, the FERPA <laughs> yeah. Act? Yeah, yeah, that's weird. You know why? Because there's people that they're not suspending that they probably should suspend. Probably. And probably. as long as they keep those, those, that information close to the vest, then it doesn't matter. Now, I, the question is, like, will we even know? We'll know who some of them are, like it. The rumors are that it's two defensive starters and, you know, whatever. Like, if uh, if Errol Spence is not there, then obviously that'll be... If they're not going to miss an SEC game, then it doesn't matter. Yeah, but it, because but Mississippi here's the State deal. Like, doesn't play a non-conference game that's worth a damn. If, if they're they suspended for, State. like... If they're suspended for eight games or something like that, then yep. obviously it's a big well, deal. No. Yes. But right now... Even if they were suspended for, like, three games... Like, eventually you're going to play a conference game in the first three games usually. Well, not them. Usually. Not, oh, they, they, their they third don't. game is Kansas State. That's right. So. They don't. They don't. Yeah. But most people would. But, yeah. No, you're you're right. You're right. All right. I think that's going to wrap up uh, wrap up today's show. Uh, tomorrow we begin previews. We begin gambling picks. I could not be more excited. You uh, you working on your picks this evening? Uh, I, I have two I love. We have to come up with four. I'll I'll come up with them by then. <laughs> well, not if you got two that it. you love, just put the most money on those, and then you know yeah. put one unit on the other ones. Yeah, simple enough. Either way, we're changing up formats a little bit. It's going to be a lot of fun. Go over to tunicatravel dot com. Check out what everything or what all Tunica has got going on down there. Uh, go over to winningcureseverything.com. Hit subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Leave us some comments. Tell us what you think. If you are listening on the podcast, hit subscribe and leave us a nice review. Share the show out with your friends. We can't thank you enough for being here. Chris, we will talk again tomorrow evening. See you. Be good, buddy. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.